Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter's. We're glad to have you here for this most holy night in the Christian calendar. Um, the service will begin outside. You're encouraged to come out and join us, but if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, just make sure you have a candle because the lights will not be much brighter than this for the first um, uh, half of the service. So thank you for joining us, and we look forward to celebrating with you the resurrection of our Lord in just a few moments. Thanks. Flaming Queen wearing a flaming coat. Well, I like the one you did for Two months to get the uh, 
long distance unless the deacon comes up here. Hey, good to see you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to St. Peter. prayers, then we're going to process in, and we're going to go in this order. It will be Marty carrying the Paschal candle, it will be Father Don carrying the incense that's hypoallergenic, <laughs> and it will be um, then uh, Mary Beth who is carrying the cross. Behind Mary Beth goes the choir, and then all of you lovely people, and then after that the altar party. So. Um, if you would be so kind, if you're not to wait your turn to go in, that would be most helpful. Okay. All right, we're glad to have you here, and we're going to start in just uh, 45 seconds. So, do I, while he's lighting, or once it's lit? No, once it's lit. Excuse me? I told you wrong because we'll be leaving. at me. Okay, Gamble. In the past, we may turn with heavenly desires. Your mind, we may into the festival in light through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ. He went inside. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation, for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all around us, bright with our glorious splendor. For dark 
darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad in our Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light reason with the praises of your people. O you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. Oh, holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, 
the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Hear the record of God's saving deeds in history. How God saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham arose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called this place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you have obeyed my voice. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Let us pray. God and Father of all believers, for the glory of your name multiplied by the grace of the Paschal Sacrament, the number of your children, that your church may rejoice to see fulfilled your promise to our father Abraham, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt, let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. Then the angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved in from in, from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider 
he has thrown into the sea. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Baruch. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel, why is it that you are in the land of your enemies, that you are growing old in a foreign country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted among those in Hades? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you had walked in the way of God, you would be living in peace forever. Learn where there is wisdom, where there is strength, where there is understanding, so that you may be at the same so that you may at the same time discern where there is length of days and life, where there is light for the eyes and peace. Who has found her place? And who has entered her storehouses? But the one who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. The one who prepared the earth for all time filled it with four-footed creatures. The one who sends forth the light and it goes. 
He called it, and it obeyed him, trembling. The stars shone in their watches and were glad. He called them, and they said, here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge and gave her to his servant Jacob and to Israel, whom he loved. Afterwards, she appeared on earth and lived with humankind. She is the book of the commandments of God the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk towards the shining of her light. Do not give your glory to another or your advantages to an alien people. Happy are we, O Israel, for we know what is pleasing to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us pray. O God, you led your ancient people by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Grant that we who serve you now on earth may come to the joy of that heavenly Jerusalem where all tears are wiped away and where your saints forever sing your praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. (laughs) 
A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart and stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I give, gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who are born into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we're buried with Christ in baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? believe in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we had been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, 
we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed. We might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being risen from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The woman were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the sinners and, he, and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, 
and he did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. So, it's been 28 years since I stood in the pulpit. For 26 of the last 28 years, I worked in an elementary school in suburban Philadelphia teaching and counseling students from kindergarten to sixth grade. In the homiletic spirit of Mark Harris, I'd like to start off my sermon today with a show and tell. <laughs> it connects to a story from Christmas, not Easter, but as Christians, can we ever really separate the two? During my first year as a second grade teacher, way back in 1994, we arrived at the day before Christmas break when students would often come forward with their presence. You can imagine the usual fare. Tins of homemade cookies and fudge, ties, gift cards, and of course, those one-of-a-kind favorite teacher mugs. <laughs> As students were funneling in before the start of school, they approached my desk to present their gifts, many beautifully wrapped and adorned with paper and bows. That year, I had a little boy by the name of Leo, who was the youngest of seven children. I had felt during the months that I knew him that he was a bit of a lost child in his family. He would wear tattered hand-me-downs that had been passed down from his older brothers. He was a shy kid who struggled in school, who had little support with completing homework and remembering his <laughs> lessons. He had given me the last of his candy and his money. 
After all these years, this is the student gift that I treasure the most. Because for me, this empty box is a symbol of love poured out. Love freely given. A gift of total generosity and self-emptying. Our scripture passages this evening tell a story of love freely given by our gracious God. From the story of creation in the book of Genesis to the story of God's blessing being poured out on Abraham and his descendants. The great Exodus story. The wisdom of God described by the prophet Baruch and the promise of a new heart and new spirit in the words of the prophet Ezekiel all convey God's amazing and holy love affair with God's people. It is the story of covenant, the story of a promise that reaches its fulfillment in the empty tomb. An empty tomb in and of itself has no significance. But like Leo's box, it was not the empty space it contained, but the immense and uncontainable love of our God poured out in Jesus, who was laid there after his crucifixion and death. The empty tomb. The absence of a body buried in this tomb threw the women into flight, filled with astonishment and fear. How else would they react to this tremendous climax of divine revelation that occurred in the resurrection? God's love has transformed the whole situation. The risen Son of God becomes our hope for salvation, as mentioned in Paul's letter to the Romans, where death leads to new life. You see, in this case, absence becomes presence. As a classroom teacher, as I was reading a new story, I would often have the students close their eyes to use their imaginations, to use their senses to enter into the setting, to be one with the characters. And so for a moment, I invite you to do the same, to close your eyes and place yourselves at the tomb prior to the women's arrival. Hear the silence. See the darkness. Touch the hardness of the stone. Feel the immense anguish and sadness of the Lord's followers who had placed their hope and, in, in essence, their very lives in Jesus' hands who now were dealing with the unimaginable reality of his crucifixion and death. And now, place yourself with the women as they arrived at the tomb, finding the stone rolled away, peering inside to see an empty space. Smell the spices that they had brought to anoint the Lord's body. Hear and see the brilliance of light and the sound of jubilation as the angels appeared to announce that the Lord had been raised. Feel the overflowing joy they experienced as they ran to tell the apostles what they had seen and heard. In absence, the women encountered presence. And now we come to this place, this space that just hours ago 
was empty. During the course of our celebration, we encounter the wonderful symbols of light, of water, of bread and wine. This place, this space, is filled with the living presence of the risen Lord. In the gathering of this community, in the sharing of the scriptures, in the breaking of the bread. We bring ourselves with all those spaces in our hearts that are longing to be filled, to be healed, to be strengthened by the immeasurable presence of the risen Lord. And in the breaking of the bread, we allow the Lord to fill us with his spirit, to carry on his mission of bringing love and reconciliation to a sometimes empty, broken, and fragile world. Leo's box, a gift of love and generosity. The empty tomb, a fulfillment of a promise, a symbol of God's generous, unbounded love poured out in Jesus, his son. Where in the spaces, in the places of our hearts, in our lives, do we have need to be filled with Christ's spirit? On this vigil of Easter, may this holy space and our very lives be filled with our alleluias. For the Lord is truly risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen.
Hear the prayers we have spoken, those which are in our hearts, and those for which we have yet to find words. In your wisdom and love, give us what is for our good and your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We're so glad that you could join us this evening. Do we have any guests or visitors who'd like to introduce themselves or be introduced by their hosts? I do want to say a special word of thanksgiving and welcome to our own Father Jack Anderson. Jack is a Roman Catholic priest who's been married to Ted Olson, uh, one of our associates. Uh, you may recall during COVID, Ted decided to swim up the Thames and join the Episcopal Church. And he taught all of his strokes to Jack, and Jack is now following suit. So we are so blessed to... We are so blessed to be the sponsoring parish for uh, Father Jack, and uh, he will be preaching with us a few times. Um, I regret to tell you that the bishop has told me an O on certain terms that I'm not allowed to have any more priests. <laughs> Alors. Anyway, I, I do want to say a word of thanks uh, to Robert Kowalczyk. All of the decorations that you see in the space, Robert did by himself. And he has worked all day long to bring the flowers and, and beatify this space. If you see Robert, please, because I don't think he's here tonight. If you see Robert, please thank him and tell him how much they mean to you. Also, a special word of thanks to the Altar Guild, who's polished and cleaned and moved furniture and everything else to get ready for tonight. And, of course, to our choir and our music minister, T.J. Thomas, who have labored all through the great... Uh, season of Holy Week and now to the Sunday of Easter. We thank them for their dedication and their service. <laughs> also, our bishop has uh, deemed that we are ready to return to sharing both the uh, host and the chalice for communion. I remind all of you that communion is still full and complete in either species, which is to say, if you just want to receive the host, it's still a valid and complete communion. But for those of you who are ready and, and are willing, uh, we will be offering the chalice this evening. There will be two cups. The first is to sip from, the second is to dip in, okay? So as they move across from here, if you would like to sip from the chalice, you may guide it to your lips. If you would like to dip in the chalice, wait for the second one, and you may dip in that chalice. Please do not do the palm olive commercial and soak in it. <laughs> do that at home. Um, by far the greatest transmission of disease any medical person will tell you is on our fingertips, not our mouths. Um, the chalice that is sipped from will be cleansed with a purificator that has been soaked in grain alcohol to add an extra layer of um, uh, sanitization during uh, the communion process. Above all, please do what feels most comfortable to you, but know tonight that you are welcome to God's table and that we are glad that you are here. Uh, the announcements in the bulletin uh, for today and for tomorrow, do not include birthdays and anniversaries because there's so much else going on. If we've missed your birthday, I promise you we will get it on the second Sunday of Easter. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them in giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone, bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, Peter, Mary Magdalene, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now sing.
this is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. In these, the gifts of God for the people of God. So take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his sons and daughters through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the waters of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia! 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 Alleluia!
is the gospel book. Somebody.